Very, uh, very glad to know you're still there. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, we're going to take a hot topic this morning, and Nigeria records improvement in first corruption perception index under Tinubu is uh, what we're talking about. Uh, now we're being joined by Dr. Ibrahim Oshinowo, member APC Presidential Campaign Council 2014-2019-2023. Good morning, Dr. Oshinowo, and welcome to the program. Good morning to you guys in the studio, and good morning, Nigeria. It's nice to see you again. Yes, it's also a pleasure here seeing you. Okay, we are now on the... 145th spot in this corruption uh, perception index. To some people, it's a, a win that has to be celebrated. To some people, it's a shame that we are just uh, 35 uh, spots shy of the last spot in this corruption perception index. Out of 180 countries, we are 145. I'd like to know what you think about this ranking of Nigeria at the 145th spot. Okay, um, thank you so much for having me uh, from Capital Territory. Um, I would like to, you know, state that the first we need to know the um, organization that is coming up with the ranking profiling, and what are the samples, what are the indices they use to determine the position of our country. Don't forget that we have no other country than this country called Nigeria. And our allegiance should be to this country. Number one, a lot of indexes, a lot of samples needs to be taken to come up with um, statistical evidence that shows that we are in number 40, either number 48 or which number they 145, come out with. 145. 145. So we need to look holistically into a lot of factors. We need to look at the environmental factor. We need to look at the geopolitical factor of each, each continent. We need to look at the risk management impact analysis of each co co um, uh, countries and continents. We need to look at the financial warehousing of each, each country. For instance, I've said this in so many fora, including Adizera, that the West are the major issue, are the major financial warehousing for illicit fund for West Africa and other developing countries. I've said that in the international, international arena. Most of the illicit funds that escape from the developing states, like Congo, South Africa, Ghana, Pene, including Nigeria, are deposited in the Western countries like Switzerland, France, UK, United States, and other countries. So these are the indexes that we need to analyze, you know, thoroughly for us to even decide and determine the statistical evidence they are able to show on the so-called result. However, this country and this administration has been responsive in terms of cognitive, you know, response to any flashpoint. You know, for instance, a minister, a ranking minister, for instance, a minister of the federal cabinet was suspended on just an alert or cry out by Nigerians on, you know, bridge of processes and the federal civil service rule. This is a well performer, performing indices for this administration. Secondly, one of the biggest country and the richest man in Africa is being interrogated by this administration. That has never happened before. Why Jonathan Obasanjo, nobody had the effrontery or the audacity to query Dangote uh, conglomerates. But this administration has investigated and continued to investigate what transpired over the years with Dangote. So these are steps that this administration has been taking. And I will call on all meaningful Nigerians to support the administration. Because these are both steps. For instance, this government is able to reduce the global and fraudulent cabal 
Scabas effort <coughs> on subsidy, importing our fuel, we will subsidize fuel here in Nigeria, and the same fuel and the same product will be transported to Cameroon, Niger, Ghana, and other neighboring states at a subsidized rate. This administration is able to stop that. It takes a lot of political effort, political sagacity, and intellectual mobile you know, leadership to be able to face this order. It's not a job. Buhari couldn't do it. Jonathan couldn't do it. Kwasanjo couldn't do it. Actually, Adu came and he told them that this subsidy is gone. Out of almost 230 million population of good people of Nigeria, few, less than 100, has milked us to over $9 trillion in the last 10 years of subsidy. So what are we talking about? So who are these people coming out with this, um, you know, vocal and 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 uh, on 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 statistic uh, position for Nigeria? I think we are doing well. I would like to stop at that. Let me take you on some points that you raised. Um, uh, you talked about the fact that when you're looking at the indices that was used uh, to to bring about these results, you need to consider a lot of things in the countries that you are assessing, as it were. And you have to consider environment and so many other things that you mentioned. What has environment got to do with corruption? Someone collecting bribe is not because the sun is shining too much or the rain is falling too much. What has environment got to do with corruption? Because these are the things that you mentioned that should have been considered before they give you the result that they gave you. So, what do they have to do with the fact that our nation is corrupt and we're trying to look for solutions for it? You know, if you want to talk about solution and corruption, one needs to be very, very vigilant and observant. Don't forget about the Western, you know, politics on West Africa. Don't forget the history of, you know, Congo. And don't forget the history of why some military junctas take over governance in other West African and, and you know, other, South, other East African states. You know, a lot of factors come up. For instance, if you are talking about the Bloomberg report, data and statistics needs to show how you come about with the ranking of each country. For instance, in South Africa, the government of South Africa is acquiring, you know, um, the former president of the country, acquiring the amount spent of on foreign diplomacy from you know, from Ministry of Foreign Affairs of South Africa. So the global corruption indices needs to be holistically looked into before you rank Nigeria. And however, you know, we don't I don't want us to waste our time on this, you know, uh, Western, you know, uh, uh, practical way of you know attacking our dignity. I don't want us to lay more emphasis. But I believe that domestically, we must look into those factors. A lot of factors. In, if you are saying Nigeria is corrupt, the United Kingdom is corrupt because most of over 400 billion, over, over 4 billion pounds in two years has been deposited in the, in, 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 in the British financial system. So why do they allow the foreign illicit funds from developing states to come into their system? And most of them, they don't release it. They don't release those things. They don't just come and discuss uh, Nigeria is corrupt, Nigeria is bad, Nigeria is this, Nigeria is that. What are the data analysis? We need to, they need to show us who is this organization coming up with all these things. So these are the discussions that we need to look into. So are, are, you, very, very are you saying because they come from these organizations, they should be discredited? Because the people who brought this out, for instance, are, uh, let's say, CISLAC, which is like an arm of the NBA of Nigeria. And there are some other organizations in Nigeria that sourced for all these things uh, around the globe and saw the parameters that were used and all that, and then brought out this uh, figure that this is what it is. So are you saying these parameters that were used are not supposed to be used for Nigeria. Is that what you're saying? And before you even answer that, um, the scripture, let me, sorry, let me use that. The Bible says that, uh, do we sin so that, continue in sin so that grace may abound? Uh, is it because that they, they are 
Why are we using institutions that are, are receiving the monies and the corruption items uh, in their countries? Why are we even referencing them here? Because if you say, I can continue to steal, because after all, you are the one who has been housing my money when I steal, it doesn't mean, it doesn't look like someone who wants a solution to the problem. Just because they are receiving it, do we continue to do what we are doing because the Western nations are not being sincere themselves? They are not the ones who are facing the inflation now. They are not the ones who are facing the hardship in Nigeria right now. If they are receiving our money because we are giving to them, yes, they are corrupt in their own, but why would we need to reference them when we are trying to get solutions to our problems? I, I will tell you that it's a what they call global mind game. By reducing the Western state dignity into zero, by letting us, you know, see ourselves as a poor and, you know, irregular nation. Now, the CISLAC you mentioned and the MBA, with due respect to some of my friends who are in MBA, MBA itself, in the annual general meeting, the second vice president or the secretary accused the, the, the MD of uh, the, um, the chairman of MBA of corruption. So a lot of things needs to be dealt with by coming into the public forum to discuss about the indices that Nigeria is 34, Nigeria is 101 million and four. These are mind games. We need data. Six clerks, what have you done? Where are you coming from? What is when you are doing the statistical data analysis? What are the inflation rates in this country? How are the responsiveness? How much have been recovered by the anti-graft agency? What are the returnees that have been made by present government and the previous government? What are the uh, fund escape, you know, loopholes? Recently, Nigerian government is, is, is you know, tightening up its taxes revenue, it's tightening up its, you know, payment platforms and the rest of it. You know, so limits are being measured on most of the payments outreach to even, even the companies and, you know, private, private sectors. So most of these Western countries come into our country, a mining sector, oil and gas, construction, and the rest of it. And they cut away with our money. In fact, telling Nigerians to bring money into their countries. So we need to look holistically. I want to remain, I want to, I want to continue to hammer on that point that this data, where do they source it from? Are they measuring it on Mbasanjo government, on uh, Jonathan government, on Jaradwa government, on uh, Wallis government, and now the present government. So these are the things that we must do. You know, I'm an academician. I love to work with data. I love to play with data. So if you are saying that you are placing Nigeria on 140, 145, or 146, what number is the United Kingdom? What number is the United States? What number is Switzerland? What number is Finland? Another Caribbean state. We are illicit funds are presently deposited. So these are the discussions that we must make. I'm not encouraging that Nigerians should not, you know, desist from, you know, taking our scarce resources abroad. But this present government has proven to me and other, you know, uh, well-meaning Nigerians that they are up to the task to tackle, you know, the anti-corruption anti crusade. I just gave you a few examples. You know, a minister... Just an attempt to send just about half a billion to a private account, as she has been suspended, and hopefully she's gone. And if you are, if you can do some, you know, investigative journalism into the present government, you'll find out that every minister is sitting tight, and a committee has been raised also to look into the affairs. So these are the discussions that we must make. This is our country, and we must be we must be expressly clear to all these, you know. Um, 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 Jankara, Jankara, data uh, 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 um, firms are just coming out with frivolous figures of position or ranking. So we want to be careful about you know promoting them. That's what I would say. Now uh, let's just forget about the Western uh, Western countries that may be uh, may be um, giving us figures that, like you say, may not be as good as they should be. Um, if you were to rank Nigeria on corruption, what would you rank it? Let, let's forget about other administrations. We're talking about uh, almost a year 
of uh, the present administration. And this is the first time this ranking has come out. So we don't care what figures were in the previous administration of Buhari or Jonathan or anything. We're talking about now because it is now that we are in. They scored, Nigeria scored in all those parameters, they scored 25, or we scored, not there. We scored 25 out of 100 points. That's 25% of the entire uh, points. So regardless of what the uh, parameters are, how would you rate Nigeria on the corruption perception index if you were to rate Nigeria? You know what? Um I'm not going to ban, you know, I'm not going to bounce around, you know, ranking figures or, you know, telling you that uh, Nigeria is, you know, 70, 75%, you know, in the grade of, you know, 1 to 100. But I will tell you a lot of things that, like I said, I'm going to go back. I mean, I am a data man. I am, you know, an academic and a researcher. So, I yeah, have that, to that's the, prob the problem it, is that we let the Western nations or any other nation to give us the data that we should have had. So what data does Nigeria have that they can should give, not us, give us data? Why would they give which us data? One do we Why have, would give us data? Which one do we have to counter Why? the data, the false data, if, you, if I may, that uh, is coming from external sources? Which data do we have in Nigeria? Because that not having data is part of corruption. You want to do population, you don't know the population of, say, Nasarawa state. So you cannot even give a policy that will uh, be good enough for the people of Nasarawa because you don't know their number. People are inflating it because they want to get gains from the federal government and so on. So what data do we have in Nigeria to counter the false or misleading data coming from external forces? That's what gives us worry. And you are a data man, so now, what, let, what do we do? Now, let me give you about the data analytical you know, issue of this country. And it started from 1960. Hmm. You know, British, for instance, has been having the data of birth and death since 1842. Hmm. Data is not something that you are going to come up in 10 years, in 15 years, and you, have, you are going to have the accuracy. You know, birth, death, data, lay the foundation for all security agencies, all the financial institutions, and allow government to plan logistics on its citizens. Now, we just started NIMS, NIMSI, recently, to capture that. In fact, a lot of people in Nigeria, 20 years ago, will have, I have almost about five lines, around 2004. Some have 10 lines. But the effort of government has reduced that any line, any mobile line number you are having now has to be linked with your data. You have to open your back account with your data. These things have been honed in the Western states and the European states for more than 100 years. So you have to give it to the Nigerian government, try to harmonize our data into our passport issuance, into our financial system, into our security system, into our you know, mobile and communication system, these are the efforts that will grow over the time that will give you a level of foundating, you know, the data, you know, bank for the country. So we should have wait for like for another instance, 200 years before we can have I, this data. I, no, because I'm, I'm not saying that. As we speak this now, is, the population is, census has not been done. It was supposed to have been I'm done. Coming, but it's not I'm coming done. into I'm coming into that. Don't forget that because of the general election last year, the census commission could not do that. And hopefully they will do it this year or next year. A lot of factors, you know, will play. Now, the population sensor, instead of you know capturing, you know, you know, in a in a in a in a squeeze, you know, format, any debt, any debt in this country needs to be registered by an agency. No way. That's the reason why the Western states have you know accurate. Even most of their data are not accurate, but they are almost about seventy percent good. So these are the things they take over the years into their financial portfolio into their data analytical reasonings and, you know, risk management portfolio to know that, okay, this is where, this is amount of people that is going to be giving birth this year. This is the amount of people that is going to die this year. This is the age range that the government needs to plan for. This is the second batch of the age range that the government needs to look into their welfare. So these are the major issues that will come up to say indexes of who. In this country now, for a minister to make attempt to send over 490 million to a personal account. That will not happen in the West. Because the financial system, 
the financial regulation will not even allow the transaction to fly in the first place. So I'm not saying that ranking is not good, but we need to see the evidential proof of data that says that Nigeria almost, let's, say, let's assume, one trillion as capital flight has left Nigeria in 2022. Out of this one trillion, Certain percentage is in the UK, is in the Western state, is in the Swiss, in Switzerland, France, and other states of the you know of the European Union. So these are the discussions that over time we must analyze. Nobody will just come and say Nigeria is in number two hundred. Nobody will just come and say Nigeria is, is rating twenty five percent out of hundred. That is fallacy. That is self discussion. It doesn't make any scientific or, or academic proof. For instance, I've given you, we don't forget also, we are a developing nation. Here we still have the issue of power. Here we still have the issue of road construction. Here we still have the issue of health system in this country. Here we don't have benefit for ages, for elderly, 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 elderly ones. Here we don't have child support. All these amenities, you know, digital by the Western states are coordinated by the permanent data gathered. So why is it so, so difficult in Nigeria to do these things? What I'm trying to say. Why is it so difficult to do these things? Because we cannot wait for 200 years to get these things right. Because the, the same way I'm making call on my phone in Nigeria is the same way the British man is making call on his phone in uh, Britain, even though they had these phones before us. So we cannot wait and say, because they started first, we cannot do this. Why not we look for homegrown solutions to what we are doing and then find a way around it to get data? But it seems as if this data is the one that makes everybody to... For instance, the minister that brought about the NIN has been part of the people who were crowdfunding a, a, a ransom payment for a, a friend of theirs. And he promised us that when this NIN comes, they are going to use it to track uh, hoodlums, bandits, kidnappers, all those people and all that. And then everybody, every Nigerian wanted it. And we did it. We have BVN. We have NIN. We, you go to the passport office, you still have to do one or two things and all that. It doesn't seem as if we are deliberate about gathering our data, having a, a data bank that will help us track things. In fact, yesterday it was on the news that the, Niger the security people are saying that they are not able to track criminals because they don't have gadgets in Nigeria, a very rich country. So we just wonder why is it so difficult to have this data? And when we have the data, why is it so difficult to use the data for the purpose for which they should be used? Thank you. Um, there is no way we'll discuss and, you know, being patriotic without look, looking into our domestic issues. Mm -hmm. First, every minister of the federal government of Nigeria needs to know that its allegiance is to the constitution and to the country, not to his, uh, his or her tribe or geopolitical zones. And that's why in so many fora, I have made few calls that we should remove the statehood. I'm from Aqua Ibom State, I'm from Kano State, I'm from Ogo State. That's the constitution should not allow that. If you are born on this land, you are a Nigerian first and nothing more. And the zone, six geopolitical zones, should be expunged from the constitution so that everybody occupying any appointment in the state of the federation or with the federal government will know that first it is from Nigeria. Is that in the constitution, the six <laughs> geopolitical zones? The sense of patriotism. Are the, six, are the six geopolitical zones in the constitution is, or is just a, a function of uh, convenience? It was bullshit. There is nothing like six geopolitical zones. Everybody is in Nigeria. The sense of patriotism will, will naturally increase. If I am a minister of communication, the first thing my family or my ethnic line will call me is that I should increase or I should increase the data of the Northwest. If another one from the South South comes, the ethnic group, the others, will be calling him to you know fraudulently increase the data or reduce the data of others. 
for economic gain and other you know government benefit. So these are the internal issues that we are having in terms of data gathering. The minister you reference is a brilliant guy, is a fantastic guy, but he lost it by being you know ethnically you know uh, 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 sick. Is more of you know a tribe agenda. How can a security company, a, company, a security uh, apparatus of this country, says that somebody make a call, you kidnap someone, and you made a call for a ransom, and the security agency could not track where that call was made from, and who is making that call? That's absurd. Look at Africa coast here. Look at Ghana here. If you make any call, the security officer will know the time, the location, the house number, the street number. You made that call. So these are our own internal issues that I'm calling on the federal government and the Minister of Communication, Bosun Tijani, to look into. This is not a tribal issue. It's a national security issue that we must look into. So that people will not just come up on their coffee table and run calls. And give us and dish out any number for us without evidential statistic, you know, proving or evidence on the table. So these are the discussions. So the minister you reference on was low, you know, he's a brilliant guy, but he lost it when he applied tribal sentiment on major national issue. That is where we have where we are today. But however, the government must continue, the new minister must ensure that the data analysis of this country and the data gathering of this country is done nationally, not by tribe. The new minister is from my state, is from the southwest Nigeria. The last one is from the north, central, or northeast. So if everybody is doing what they need there to do, so we must, you know, uh, if everybody is loyal to the constitution, we will go far over the years. But I'm telling you, to get an accurate data in Nigeria will take us nothing less than 30 years. It will take us nothing less than 30 years. So we need to amend the constitution to fit into, you know, the nationhood and, you know, the patriotism of all Nigerian, you know, Nigerians to be loyal to their country and stop saying, I am from the southwest, I'm from the east, I'm from the west, I'm from the north. We need to be a Nigerian force. So once that happens, I'm telling you, any minister that comes into office will ensure that those data are for Nigerians, not for his tribe. Okay, um, just finally, uh, if you were to advise the president on the way to go in fighting corruption in Nigeria, what are some of the things, the pointers that you will give to him, apart from what you think that he is doing right now? Yes, kudos to Mr. President. He has, he's making a very frantic effort to ensure that we reduce, you know, the escape of, you know, our scarce resources. For instance, uh, um, I, I'm able to digest what he did with NMPC by moving the federal payment platform to CBN. That's a fantastic one. So we need to know how much is coming into the country and form yourself. So any payment for crude should go directly to the CBN, not NMPC. Also, in terms of taxes, so the, uh, my dear brother, uh, uh, Mr. Isaac Ayodeji, is doing fantastically well, you know, trying to harmonize and close the loop so in terms of collection of taxes and revenue for the government. Also, I would suggest for, to the president that most of the MBAs and agencies of government, you know, the pay -pay payment platform should be rigorously monitored by the anti-craft agencies and, you know, and coordinate the central payment, form, payment platform for all of them so that it will not be easy for anybody to siphon their scarce resources. And also, I will advise the, you know, the ICPC and the uh, uh, EFCC to do more on what they call, you know, um, 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 uh, investment uh, investigation. And other people will call it, you know, uh, economic investigation. You know, you can't be investigating a, somebody who stole 100 billion and your agency, your, your investigator, is demanding for 5%. The investigation is dead on arrival. And I, I'm appreciative that most of the investigators have been investigated right now. Because some of these people that they're investigating are over, offering, offering them, or, you know, a month that they could not even 
gathered in 35 years in service. So most of them are compromised. So the ESCC should do more and go on digital investigative, investigative you know, you know, profiling of their suspect and ensure that they get justice for the Nigerian state. So Ashwaju should continue on this path. It must be able to determine those people who have plugged this country into this economic calamity. You can imagine a dollar to a naira. It's 1,500 naira, 1,400 naira. So where are we? People are crying. People are suffering. Masses are bleeding. Mm. Bleeding so bad. So we need Ashwaju. We need Mr. President to continue on this path and reduce the economic, you know, economic calamity of this country. So I will encourage them to do more. Okay. Fund the FCC. I, ICPC has been docile. All right. We've not been doing much. So we need to know what their challenges are. So the the NIA, uh, the um, uh, NIA National Security Advisor should come up with other policy that will curb corruption in our country. Every okay. country has their own problem. All right. You know, but well, so thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Shinovo, for uh, your thoughts on the matter. Well, we thank God for small messages. No matter it, how little the steps may be, we'll still applaud the government that we are making progress, and we hope that the progress will be more in the coming years. Thank you for being a part of our program this morning. Yeah. Okay, it's Dr. Ibrahim Oshinowo, member APC Presidential Campaign Council in 2014, 2019, and 2023. He was talking about the fact that Nigeria is now ranked uh, 145th in the Corruption Perception Index. And uh, this eventually is where we're wrapping up the show this morning. We'd like you to thank you for your time uh, staying with us till this moment. Let's do it again tomorrow. My name is Nyam Gul. I'm Bye for now.